Welcome to our weekly Facebook Live. And please give me just a few seconds to connect live on Facebook. Do this just in a moment. Okay. Just a second. Okay, and now we are live. Okay. So welcome again. Also, whoever is watching uh, on Facebook, you are welcome. All dear friends, dear well-wishers, dear spiritual seekers. For the past few weeks, we were discussing some very important spiritual principles, which are actually the basic spiritual principles. And uh, we already discussed truthfulness, we discussed austerity. The last uh, was the mercy. And this week, we have amazing principle to discuss, which is cleanliness or purity. And I can challenge you right away that if you take this principle to your heart and you try to cultivate cleanliness or purity in your life, your life will transform for the better. <laughs> so we will um, start now. I would just like to read one text from Srimad Bhagavatam, or maybe two, uh, one, actually one text from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is uh, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Text 24. So I will just read the translation. And before that, I also uh, would like to say the invocation, offering respects to this amazing sacred book, Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So translation goes, in this age of satya, truthfulness, your four legs were established by the four principles of austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. But it appears that three of your legs are broken due to the rampant irreligion in the form of pride, lust for women, and intoxication. And I will read just a little tiny bit of this uh, commentary, and then I will read another text also, and then I will speak about it. <clears throat> so these principles that we are speaking about, all these four principles of austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness are the principles of spiritual culture or Brahminical culture, which is necessary for the peace and prosperity of the entire society, of the entire planet. And wherever these principles are diminished or curtailed, then there is a havoc in the human society. And at present, we can see that um, these principles are almost non-existent at the present. And um, we are facing actually so much chaos on so many different levels in the society. Um, <clears throat> so here, just a little bit, this is uh, a little bit of a description of this present age, which is called Kali, the age of quarrel. So by the influence of the age of Kali, even a pauper is proud of his penny. 
the women are always dressed in an overly attractive fashion to victimize the minds of men. And the man is addicted to drinking wine, smoking, drinking tea and chewing tobacco. So all these habits, which are so-called advancement of civilization are actually the root cause of all evils in this world. So now let me go to another text, uh, which is also from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, chapter, uh, Canto 11, chapter 21, text number 10. And here we will try to understand a little bit deeper about what is purity or what is cleanliness, because purity or cleanliness, it's a very deep topic. And uh, we will just look at it from different angles of vision. So here the translation goes, an object's purity or impurity is established by application of another object by words, by rituals, by the effects of time or according to relative magnitude. So what does this mean? <laughs> Let's see the commentary. Cloth is purified by application of clean water and contaminated by application of urine. The words of a saintly Brahmana are pure, but the sound vibration of a materialistic person is contaminated by lust and envy. A saintly devotee explains actual purity to others, whereas a non-devotee makes false propaganda that leads innocent people to commit polluted sinful activities. Pure rituals are those meant for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord while materialistic ceremonies are those that lead their followers into materialistic and demoniac activities. The word samskarena also indicates that the purity or impurity of a particular object is ascertained according to the regulations of ritualistic performances. For example, a flower to be offered to the deity must be purified with water. Flowers or food cannot be offered to the deity, however, if they have been contaminated by being smelled or tasted before the offering. The word kalina indicates that certain substances are purified by time and others contaminated by time. So now the examples, rainwater, for example, is considered pure after 10 days time and after three days in cases of emergency. On the other hand, certain foods decay in time and thus become impure. Mahatva indicates that great bodies of water do not become contaminated and alapataya means that a small amount of water can easily become polluted or stagnant. In the same way, a great soul is not polluted by occasional contact with materialistic persons, whereas one whose devotion to God is very small is easily carried away and put into doubt by bad association. In terms of combination with other substances and in terms of speech, ritual, time, and magnitude, the purity and impurity of all objects can be ascertained. Okay, so this was a very, very interesting explanation of how different things, different objects in our life, our practical life, can become pure or impure. So it, it's very, very interesting consideration. But now I would like to start actually at the beginning of uh, what really is purity. So the very first thing that um, I would like to stress is that the original purity is the purity in the spiritual world. And every one of us as a spiritual living being, as a soul, is originally pure. 
you, me, and everyone else, every living being is originally pure as a pure spiritual being. But however, now in this world, in this life that we live, even we ourselves are aware that we are not always so pure. And sometimes we may even consider ourselves quite, uh, quite dirty or polluted by different things. And um, where does this pollution comes? This pollution basically comes from our contact with this material world, with this material nature, actually with these three different modalities of material nature, uh, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So if we are looking at uh, purity from the, uh, I could say from the highest uh, aspect, Really, for us, purity means that we return back to our original spiritual purity, to our original purity of the soul. And believe me or not, th this is actually the entire essence of a spiritual path or of a spiritual advancement. Because a person who wants to advance spiritually, that's what he does. He is just purifying his nature. He's purifying his self until his real pure spiritual self fully shines through. And uh, once one awakens this pure, spiritual self, then one achieves this real purity. And at that point, actually a person achieves immortality and can, burn, can return back to the spiritual world, to the eternal home where we all belong. But now let's take a look at the purity from few other angles of vision. In uh, the material, if we look at the cleanliness or purity in the material world, in our practical life, we can uh, divide it also in certain categories like physical purity. This is purity of our physical body, of our physical surrounding and all kinds of physical, objects that we are coming in touch with. Like for example, here uh, was the um, mentioned the cloth, uh, which can be actually purified by washing. Uh, and then it was also, there was a mentioning of uh, rainwater, which can be purified by time, by just by standing for several days, the rainwater will become pure. But on the other hand, uh, like if we, we leave fruit just sitting there, uh, by time it will become impure because it will start to rot. So this is one aspect, the, the physical purity. Then uh, the more subtle level is the mental purity. The purity of the mind, purity or impurity of the mind. And the last level is the spiritual purity or purity of the soul. <clears throat> For any one of us who actually would like to cultivate purity in our life, it's very important that we practice all these uh, different levels of purity. And it is important that we really uh, take great um, care to purify ourselves on, in a physical way. And how this can be done? It is very simple. It is important that we take shower, <laughs> that we clean our body. Like for example, here now in India, 
it's a hot season. It's very, very hot. And in this hot season, like the, your, the body sweats. So it's important to take um, several showers during the day. Uh, otherwise the body, it, it's dirty. Uh, in, in the more mild climate in Europe or in the, in the States, United States, in some parts, uh, they may not be so hot, but still it is important that we uh, clean our body at least when we rise in the morning and before we, we go back to sleep. And of course it is good also somewhere in the middle of the day, like two, three times a day. It's, uh, it's actually um, recommended that we take bath or take shower. And this will help us to cultivate the cleanliness or purity of the body. And uh, believe me or not, but just by taking care of cleansing the body, this will affect also cleanliness of the mind, especially the early morning shower. And especially if the early morning shower can be, I won't say like cold, because sometimes it's very difficult, especially in the winter time, and even not healthy if somebody is very sensitive. But let's say like cool, cool in, in cool water, like it, or at least like lukewarm, not very warm or very hot. So if we take shower in such cool water in the early morning before sunrise, this water will purify not only our physical body, but also our mental body. So our mental body, it, this is actually also in different, um, in, in the different uh, philosophies or teachings, they also call this astral body. So uh, it, it gets purified uh, by taking a shower. And what does this mean? Uh, how do we practically experience this? Sometimes in the morning, um, we may uh, wake up like really with some really heavy thoughts or like depressed or sad. Maybe we had bad dreams, like some um, nightmare. But when we take such a shower, this will cleanse away all these residues of, uh, of impurity. It will cleanse the mind and then immediately we experience uh, freshness and we experience more, we, we become more, uh, more awake and also more uh, peaceful, more um, satisfied. This just, these bad thoughts just are washed away. So this is a very, very effective way. Even during the day, if you find yourself very disturbed, uh, very, yeah, very disturbed, agitated, sad, depressed. It's good to just, to just take a shower first. It will help at least a little bit to cleanse also the subtle body. So this is about taking shower, very, very essential. In a spiritual life, actually, we have that saying that cleanliness is next to godliness. So for cultivation of spiritual life, cleanliness is very important. It's actually, um, it's actually assisting one to become spiritual when one is really cultivating cleanliness in his life. So then uh, the next aspect of physical cleanliness is our clothes. It's actually important that we put on fresh, clean clothes every morning. It's very important because if we just put on the same clothes that we wear already yesterday and the day before, these clothes are not clean anymore. They're contaminated and they also contaminate our mind and our consciousness and we cannot feel fresh and, and clean and, and peaceful. So this is also important, will help us to just uh, dress in clean, fresh clothes. Then the next um, aspect of physical cleanliness is it's important that our living 
condition, living situation is clean. We have to clean our room, our apartment, our house on a regular basis. Very, very important. Because when we, if we don't clean, if we let just the dust stay all over and the clutter starting to accumulate everywhere, what happens? It also clogs our mind. And we cannot be peaceful in such place. We cannot think straight in such place. We cannot be satisfied in such place. We will be disturbed, restless, agitated. And this is the uh, effect of uh, unclean environment. So very important that we do this. This is really essential. So this is this um, physical cleanliness. Uh, of our immediate environment. And then the next level is the mental cleanliness. Mental cleanliness is just like mental hygiene. In the same way as we have to take care of our physical body and we have to keep our physical body clean. Uh, and this is also considered uh, hygiene, hygienic. We have to clean everything. Otherwise, there's some disease develops. In the same way, we also have to keep mental hygiene. What is mental hygiene? Mental hygiene means that we are very conscious of our thoughts and words so that we are thinking positive thoughts, that we are thinking how we can do good to others, how we can benefit others, and especially that we try to read spiritual literature, that we try to learn and understand more about the Supreme Person, about his activities. This is extremely powerful um, application of, of purity. Uh, this will immediately purify our mind, purify our thoughts. And another very important aspect of purifying the mind is the mantra that we regularly, daily meditate. In Bhakti Yoga, we meditate on the sound of the Maha Mantra, of the Hare Krishna Mantra. This is the single most important aspect of purification of the mind and the consciousness. And the effects are very long lasting. Your whole life completely transforms. If you just apply these few things that I, I just um, explained now uh, in your day. So you can try it. If you have not been doing this yet, Give it a try. I'm challenging you. Give it a try tomorrow. Rise up early in the morning. Take a good shower. Put on fresh clothes. Clean your room, your apartment. And then do some meditation. Especially meditation on the most pure Maha Mantra or Hare Krishna Mantra. And then after that, read some pure spiritual literature like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And you will see how your mind, your consciousness will completely transform. All of a sudden, you will start feeling happy. You will start feeling satisfied, joyful, excited about life. Like everything is just like so wonderful. And this comes just by purifying yourself. So now I would also like to uh, speak a few words about one very important aspect of purity, which is connected with those four uh, principles that, um, that I just explained in the beginning. So truthfulness, um, cleanliness, austerity, and mercy. To really practice cleanliness, 
is also very important that we are clean and pure and chaste in our relationships with other people and especially with the people of the opposite sex. Like what is going on nowadays everywhere? It's so much involvement in uh, subtle or gross um, flirting and having some relationships with the members of the opposite sex without really taking any responsibility or without taking any commitment. And although this is taking very, very lightly in a present society, actually it has a long lasting negative consequences. And uh, in its uh, culmination, this actually leads into prostitution. And this prostitution is one of the great evils of the present day society because it brings about complete destruction in the society. The entire families are broken. Uh, the children stays, stay without their parents. And there is so much uh, quarrel and pain that everybody who is involved into these relationships is experiencing. So therefore, to cultivate purity actually means to cultivate also purity in our relationship with the opposite sex. And how do we cultivate this purity? The, this cultivation is respect and respectful distance, which means that we respect everyone but we do not indulge in intimate relationships with uh, people with whom we are not intimately related in a, in, in a marriage relationship. Uh, and this actually then keeps the relationships very pure and very chaste. And uh, in such an environment, uh, in the society, when there is such an environment in the society, this actually really creates a very, very pleasant atmosphere, a very chaste, very peaceful, very satisfied atmosphere of respect, of care, of chastity and purity. And um, the long-term implication is that this actually helps, this kind of care in the society actually helps to protect the, the entire society uh, to remain pure and to continue in, in being prosperous and being peaceful and nonviolent. So I would like to stop here. Uh, I gave some um, explanation of some important aspects of cleanliness and purity and how this transforms one's life. And now I would like to, I would like to see if there is any question. Do we say, do we have anybody? Okay, I see there are some, uh, we have uh, a couple of people here listening. Do you have any question? Do you have any doubt? Uh, do you have any thought? Please kindly uh, write down in the commentary right now. And uh, we can have like a little discussion because uh, all the points are very relevant and important points for personal and also uh, global uh, peace and prosperity. So uh, I'm waiting for your input. Let's see.
if there will be something. Okay, I give you a, a few seconds, maybe a minute. And uh, in the meantime, I will just do a re really quick uh, recap of what I was speaking about. So today I introduced the fourth important principle of the Brahminical life or spiritual culture, Brahminical or spiritual culture. And this is culture, which is actually the essential culture to bring about peace and prosperity in the entire world. If you believe or not, 5,000 years ago, this culture was spread throughout the world, all over. And it is actually now, it's, a, it's because of the degradation of the society that we have lost all these principles. And the time is coming uh, to reestablish them again. So it is very important that we hear about it, speak about it and discuss about it. So cleanliness, uh, the most important cleanliness of purity is purity which is purity of the soul. And this is our original purity. So the most important is that we return back to this original pure nature that is our nature. And in order to do this, it is also important that we cultivate the purity on the material level which uh, I explained like several aspects, the physical purity, which is purity of our body, our clothes, our environment, purity of our mind. Uh, and of, of course, we, we dedicate our life to cultivate this spiritual purity, to again recover it, to again reawaken it. And at the end, I also mentioned a very important aspect of purity, which is purity or cleanliness in our dealings with other people, especially with the opposite sex, where uh, it is very important to keep uh, respect, respectful dealings, and not um, get involved into, uh, into too much uh, intimacy with people with whom we are not actually in a close relationship, like a marriage relationship. So, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't see any comment. <laughs> okay, if there will be any comment later on, you're welcome. Uh, if you have any thoughts or questions, you can write me and I will uh, answer you. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I invite you again to meet here next week.